a device called the HoloLens, which essentially is a mixed reality computer. So if you are wearing the huge headset well, back in the day, you can interact with the people, but also you can interact with holograms and the holograms can interact with you. So one of the NASA surgeons in Houston was assisting one of the uh, astronauts, her name is Samantha Christopher, as you can see over there. In her view, she could see holograms about where to uh, make the incisions, what to measure. She could see, she, she was able to see x-rays and information to help her to perform a medical procedure. It was a huge success. We performed this procedure uh, with no issues at all. This mission was led by the NASA surgeon and also Air Force General, Dr. George Smith. And after that, he came to me and said, hey, Fernando, I really like this. It was cool. What else can we do? And that's Dr. George Smith and I. And I said, well, I heard that Microsoft is developing something called holographic teleportation. And he told me, okay, what's holographic teleportation? I said, okay, they have this studio. They have 109 cameras with a laser, with a LiDAR. You come into the studio, they capture you. And a couple of weeks later, they deliver you a file, which is huge. You put it in the HoloLens and you can see a hologram of yourself. It's not live, but it's a hologram of yourself. And he told me, hey, I really like this. I want you to make this happen on a station and I want you to make it live. And I said, okay, we, we can do that. That was 2018. And to give you an idea about what is holographic teleportation, the best analogy for me is 3D printing. With a 3D printer, you have thousands of layers of material until you have a solid object. With holoportation, it is the same. We call it actually volumetric video. You have thousands of layers of video until you have a solid hologram of someone. Uh, you can interact with a hologram. You can fill the hologram with something we call haptics, and they can see you. Um, why this is better compared with FaceTime or any video conference? Well, you have six axes of freedom. So going back to my story, Joe told me like, okay, um, let's make it on, a st let's put it on a station, but we have multiple limitations. One, here on earth, Microsoft has a studio with 109 cameras. On a station, we only have one. Second, here on earth, it was recorded and processed using very powerful gaming computers. On a station needs to be live and with very old computers. On, believe me or not, on the space station, we have something called SSC computers, space stations computers. And those are very old computers because those computers doesn't receive uh, big damage from radiation or atomic oxygen or conditions in space. Then, the other challenge was we don't have a constant communication. Here on Earth, we have a satellite, we have an antenna, and we just aim to any of the satellites and we have, a, we have communication. On a station, the station is moving so fast, every 90 minutes, it completes an orbit uh, on, on Earth. So what happened, we have an antenna that aims down instead of up, but because the station is moving so fast, we need to adjust that antenna, eh, like maybe every 15, every 20 minutes, and aim to another satellite. So during those gaps, we don't have any communication. We call it satellite handovers. Then we have multiple firewalls. And then the biggest limitation is bandwidth. Uh, on a station, um, we have something called Skynet, which is not related with the movie. Uh, we have something called CloudNet, which is our internet on a station. But we have 20 megabits per second. It's super slow. And we use 20 megabits per second for everything, to run the station, trying to dock spacecrafts and everything. So when we came with the idea uh, of using holoportation, they only gave us five megabits per second. And to give you a better idea how a hologram looks like, 
uh, that picture is one of my employees in Alabama holoporting next to me in Texas. So really you can see the person, you can see if I have a camera and I'm aiming to this auditorium, I can beam you up and make you holograms everywhere. And I have a very cool video, hopefully it will play here, about telemedicine, yes. Let me fast, let me fast forward. Evaluate a USB port. One of the applications we believe is holoportation in Alabama. Though neither Nathan nor I have any medical experience or expertise, we'd like to show you a few steps from the stroke evaluation test, as well as a few physical therapy exercises to give you a sense for the power of this software, as well as some potential use cases. So let's get started. Nathan, thanks for joining us today. I'd like to go through a few steps of a stroke evaluation, and then we'll do a couple of physical therapy type exercises, just to give our viewers so that's a stroke evaluation. I don't know if you can hear it clearly, but in front of my colleague Mark is Nathan Rim in Alabama. So for Mark, Nathan is right there. And from Nathan, Mark is right there. Like we are right here person to person. All right, that looks great. Um, now we're gonna check for pronator group. So what you're gonna do is put your hands up Palms up. So you're asking to raise the hands and all the procedure. And I'm going to uh, move forward to the next slide, but that will give you a bit, uh, some idea about this technology. So going back to the, um, using this technology on a station, on the space station, um, during 2019, as you know, we had uh, COVID and we had isolation and NASA was very sensitive about pushing the gas for technologies that will help us in isolation situations and also to literally bridge medicine uh, and trying to bring the best physicians to the station and perform medical evaluation. So we did it. Uh, Dr. Joe Smith was the first human holoporter to the space station. The second one was me and he performed a couple of medical evaluations to some of the astronauts. That was a one-way holoportation. So just to give you an idea, that's Dr. Josh Smith at NASA's Mission Control, Building 30, uh, interacting with one of the astronauts. So for the astronaut, for the crew member, Dr. Smith was there, but for Dr. Smith, he was looking uh, to a computer screen. He was watching a computer screen just to, to try to interact with the astronaut. It was very successful. Um, NASA sent a press release, which became viral in at least uh, 15 different languages. Um, and one of the reasons is uh, Dr. Smith is a huge fan of Star Trek. So he made a lo live long and prosper from Spock. So le let me tell you a story. His wife is from Japan, from a very remote island in Japan. According to Dr. Smith, they don't have any radio, they don't have any television, they only have radio, which was cool. And then um, he was on vacation in Japan. His brother-in-law came running and said, hey, yo, yo, guess what? NASA invented some technology called holoportation and they sent a, a NASA surgeon to the space station as a hologram, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Joe asked him, hey, how do you know that? And he said, well, it was on the radio. He said, on the radio here in this remote island of Japan? And he said, yes. So what happened then, it was, he called me and said, hey, Fernando, guess what? The news are here in Japan. I said, no, Joe, the news are everywhere. This was, this was one of the most viral press releases from NASA. So NASA got excited. I got excited. And then um, that happened in October 2019. Uh, we continue with the holoportations. And then December 2019, NASA called me and I was like, okay, I'm going to receive an award that's pretty good. They're going to give me a prize. Um, they told me, hey, we need to move forward and have a two-way holoportation. So that means like the astronaut on a station 
will be beamed down as a hologram in while someone admission control will be beamed up as a hologram and they can interact with each other and say okay that's cool and i was just taking notes and say okay um, it's going to be the first mission with private citizens uh the name of the company is axiom so it's axiom one mission uh it's going to be the first time that this happened i was just taking notes and say it's going to happen in in april and most of the projects with the government take like four to five years at least. So I was like, that was 2019. And I asked, okay, that's pretty cool. So are you talking April 2024, 2025? And they told me, no, it's um, April 2020. So you need to move forward. You need to make, make this fast. You need to send all the equipment to the station um, because we want this to happen. And they said, the, the guy managing this, is a billionaire from Montreal, uh, from Canada, and he wants to make this happen. And I was like, okay, you want to, me to risk my reputation, my success, trying to put something together in three months with a crew member that didn't have all the training? And they say, yes. I say, okay, just to be sure, did you say millionaire with an M or billionaire with a B? And they say billionaire and say, okay, that, that changed everything. That means like money is not an issue. So we move forward. Um, it was hard. We we tested all the equipment that we needed on the station. It was hard during Christmas uh, to test all the equipment for radiation or radio radio frequencies and everything. And it was very hard to try to find someone willing to stay. Like this this room, this chamber, is like maybe this size, but it really isolates everything. No, there's no light. There's no sound. You can hear your heartbeat. Uh, there is no radio frequencies and what they want to is to put the equipment there and be sure that there is no light coming from the equipment, no sound, no radio frequencies. I was like, well, it's going to be very hard to find an idiot to be there um, during Christmas, but they found it. It was me. So I tested, um, which was a huge success. And then during this period, NASA is one of the most positive agencies always uh, taking the best solutions and throwing solutions. Uh, we try to make this happen. We have um, a facility in Houston that simulates the space station. It didn't work. Uh, we work a, a full Friday. We have 10 NASA centers. Every time that someone just connected trying to throw a solution, it didn't work. Um, they said, yeah, it's not going to happen. I told them, hey, let me try it with my team. Let me create my own facility. Give me the weekend. And we figure out a way to make that happen. It worked. Um, NASA told us four times it, it will not be able on that timeline. We made it happen and they told me like, hey, that was a huge Hail Mary. So by April, we made this uh, success. We had the first crew of astronauts on a station holoporting back to Earth. So what you will see on this video that looks like Minecraft, and I will explain to you why, um, is Mark Patty, the first human holoported from station to mission control. And also on the back, you may be able to, to see uh, a camera of him on a station. And that was a medical evaluation from one of the NASA surgeons holoported to the station, meanwhile, he was holoported down to Earth. Okay, can you point with the other hand to where that pain is? Okay. And then we have other two astronauts that want to join to the party. So this video is um, was taken from a station, from two astronauts holoported from ground to a station. Well, this one didn't work, but at least you can see the picture of these guys holoported from ground to the station. Maybe it worked. Then let me, before I move forward, we have been doing these holoportations for a while. Let me just show you a quick video and walk you through these uh, first holoportations on a station. So that's Dr. Joe Smith on during the first holoportation. That's one of the crew members with a HoloLens interacting with Dr. Smith. That's Dr. Smith as a hologram on a station. 
Again, Dr. Smith on the ground. A solo portrait to the station as a hologram. Some of the crew members interacting with Dr. Smith. That's me and Dr. Smith uh, on a station. That's Mark Patty before he was teleported from station to the ground. That's Mark Patty floating admission control as a hologram. That's Thomas Pesquet, a French astronaut, interacting with a bunch of physicians during one medical evaluation. So then, from the media perspective, it was um, it was viral. We went through CBS, we went to multiple media channels. I'm going to skip on this one, but it was uh, the media was very interested on this one. Um, it's a bit different from some other languages. It's Finally, NASA gave me an award. We won the NASA Innovation of the Year Award, uh, which was cool. But then something happened, which was pretty interesting. So during one of the holoportations, imagine the space station is small. It's the same size as a football field. And the crew live on a station between six months to a full year. So they know each other. They know every single corner of the station and the astronauts are very smart. What happened before this holoportation, one of the crew members, Kayla Barron, she was waiting for Dr. Smith to appear for the medical evaluation. She got distracted for a second. She moved her head to the left and she floated forward a little bit, like a couple of inches, moved her head back forward and the hologram of Dr. Smith was in front of her and she shouted like, hey, go back, you're invading my personal space. And then she stopped and she laughed and she said, Houston, I never believed that a hologram can invade my personal space, but that happened. But that was very important because at that point, the Human Health Performance Division at NASA told me, Space Medicine told me like, hey, if in her mind the doctor was there, this is very powerful because for at least for a second, she believed that the doctor was there. Let me show you the, the video. I believe this one has audio. Station reporting that I can now hear audio. Um, the hologram image, however, has gotten really, really close to me. Didn't know a hologram was invading my personal space, but it's happening. So that was so nice. So what happened? Dr. Smith came again with me and said, Hey, Fernando, what else can we do? And I say, Well, what if we really build a holodeck, a room that doesn't require glasses, a technology that we don't require those special $4,000 Vision Pros or HoloLens, uh, and we create a way that whatever is happening on the moon, we can sit in this room from ceiling, uh, floor, all the walls. So you can bring a subject matter expert if they need to fix something. You can bring family members. You can bring personnel for training, future astronauts, fam or also politicians. I can say, okay, let's do it. So we're building four holodecks. This one was uh, we put it on the operation in October 2023. Uh, it's at the uh, Johnson Space Center, Building 268, and that's Joe in a, making a little message. Welcome to the future. You're now experiencing what our astronauts experience on board the International Space Station, when we were holoporting to the space station. Now I'm holoporting to you there in the hollow deck. The future is now. So I come to this point, while here is less than we so when that happened, we, when I say we, is my company, we came with the idea like, hey, this is very powerful. We are at least five companies working in different ways to use holoportation. Uh, there is Microsoft, which we have a great partnership with them. There is Google. They are launching a special uh, device that is like a telephone booth, but it's two-way. Uh, 
and you can see the other person, the price will be like $1 million, which is pretty cool. There is a company in California, we have a very good relation with them. His name, the name of the company is Portal. It's also you walk into a studio, and then uh, you have a telephone booth on the other side, and you can see yourself like you are inside a box, and that's pretty cool. It's $150,000. Um, there is Samsung trying to do something, Meta, Cisco, WebEx, they also have some technology based on those glasses, the Magic Lips and the HoloLens. And I was like, hey, this is very powerful, but it's very expensive. What if we figure out a way to make this device agnostic? What if we also figure out a way to project the holograms without the glasses? So again, when I say we, it's my company. We took the decision to split the company into two companies, Aerospace, which serves the government, uh, the US government, and AXA Tech, which will serve the commercial market. And then we came with the idea like, hey, a lot of people from here, maybe they have a Kinect camera from their Xbox, but not all the people have that. But everyone has this. Everyone has a cell phone. What if we can capture a three-dimensional hologram with this camera? And what if instead of telling you what device you need to use to visualize the hologram, you can use the fancy HoloLens or Vision Pros or you can use that $300 MetaQuest 3 device, or you can use also a smartphone or a tablet. Right now, my technology works on 2,300 devices, um, and I will show you the QR code right now for limited time, it's free. And I will, because I, I really believe that this technology can help a lot of people, uh, not only in space, everywhere, and also we will be able to create more applications based on this technology. And also, from the other side, a lot of people either with smart augmented reality or mixed reality or virtual reality, some people, they don't like it. So we built a, a device called Holo Connector, uh, which we have two sizes. One is the human size. The other one is a uh, table size, which will help you to project holograms without glasses. So my technology, we made it available, we launched this device during a comic convention in Houston, Comic Palooza. Then we made the official presentation at the Smithsonian Museum in, um, in Washington, D.C. Uh, two weeks ago. So trying to figure out something. And what you can see there, uh, there's people and the holograms projected next to them. And you can, you can play with this technology as well. And this is kind of a render of the holo connector. And now let me let me share a story before I go back to the application. Um, I have two children, and they say, "Hey, Dad, uh, you should be an influencer and interview people with with your technology." And I was like, "Eh, I'm not an influencer, and uh, I'm not that kind of guy." But I'm going to show you how being an influencer are, is just fake and is not going to work. So I launched a YouTube channel, which you can join if you want to. There is a QR code. I uh, start interviewing people with my technology as holograms. And uh, later on, you will be able to visualize these um, interviews as holograms as well. For instance, I have one of the guys that invented the internet, Dr. Vinton Cerf. I have so many people. And then after one month, um, YouTube sent me this creator award, like now you are an influencer. Right now, I believe we reached 3.5 million views. We reached 650,000 subscribers, um, and right now I'm receiving a check every month. And I was like, yeah, this story really backfired me. But I noticed like this technology is really powerful. So I decided to make it available for anyone uh, and go from there. Because the, the applications are unlimited. You can have your mechanic next to your car and helping you. you can take your best body to you during a trip, capture unique memories. You can do whatever to, you want to. So that's why, and hopefully you can scan this one. Um, I decided with my company to make this technology available for anyone. Right now it's free. Uh, at some point we are going to charge like $9 a month because we, we don't really want to make money and charge you a lot of money. We want people to use this technology. At some point, we're going to release a software developer kit so you can use this technology as a testbed because I believe that we can lead a, 
the market of um, holographic communications. Right now, I have surgeons from the uh, Houston Medical Center training people in Africa. And we reduce the bandwidth from five megabits per second to one megabit per second because you don't have great coverage on those areas. So the really the idea is to help not only medicine, but help anyone. So if you want to download it, uh, it's free for now. And saying that, uh, I try to go fast, especially because I started late, uh, but also to give you the opportunity to make questions. So if you have any questions, I believe that we have some time. And uh, hopefully you like my presentation. I try to rush. Uh, I know that you have a very full program today, so I don't want to bore you during the, your first session. And thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, and with this light, I cannot see you. I, it's like an interrogation room. So if someone has a question, just let me know or try to do something, turn on your device, and I will be happy to answer it. Ideally, we we love to have five megabits per second. Right now it's working with one megabit per second. Um, we are going to release a way to make it like ultra high definition. The biggest um, milestone is to get it like maybe 12 megabits per second for ultra high definition. But what's going to happen is, and that's important, every two weeks we push an update so the technology is changing every two weeks. Um, and I want you, I want this technology to make it your technology. So every time that we have input, let me give you an example, and I'm going to go back to your question. Um, someday I receive an email like, hey, Fernando, can you add a selfie mode? And I was like, a what? A selfie mode? Yeah, I want to love to have pictures or videos with my friends while I'm on vacation. I was like, okay, and we did it. So every time that we, someone comes with a question or a suggestion, we implement it. Um, right now it's working with one up to five megabits per second. We have in the backlog a way that if you have 12 megabits per second, at some point it's going to take the 12 and it, it will ask you if you want to go to the, like ultra high definition. Uh, and if not, you can go to five or one. Now with 12, we have something called haptics and I forgot to mention that. With haptics, what happened, we have a glove that is 300 bucks and some other equipment. And as a surgeon, and I'm not a physician, they just, touch the patient as a hologram, take the lymph nodes and say, hey, you have an infection and they do their magic. We have been doing that and that's part of the technology that we're releasing to the public. The capability of have the essence of the other person there and also the capability of feeling the other person. And right now it's multiplayer. We can have up to four people at the same time during one session. You create your own rooms. But at some point, we want to make it uh, unlimited. At least have 300 people or more per room, so you have a concert or an event, you can invite anyone. Any other question? And if you have a question, just try to raise your hand because I cannot really see from here. Okay. So the question is if I have competition, and yes, we do have a bunch. Um, we play nice with at least four. Uh, Meta or Zuckerberg, they are trying to do this. It's not live, but uh, they're trying to create this holoportation technology as well. Cisco, WebEx, they call it WebEx hologram. They have a way to capture holograms for two people. You have a special rail of cameras and you need to have the WebEx business edition and you need to have the HoloLens, which is pretty cool, but pretty expensive, but that's one market. Uh, Samsung, we don't play with them. Um, we try to reach to them, they, they didn't respond. Because what I'm trying to do is to play nice with everyone so we can create a standard of these same practices. Um, Microsoft, we have been playing very nice with them. Actually, they added an article on their website about us uh, because also we use Microsoft technology 
Apple were playing nice with them. Um, Portal as well and, and Google as well. They are different technologies. Ours is the only one that is portable, multiplayer, device agnostic. And I don't want to challenge you. I will be careful to say that here, but it's, it, it's pretty secure. It's encrypted because we developed this technology for NASA and the Department of Defense. So it's not unhackable, no, don't try it, but try that technology. Uh, but we try to make it pretty secure because if you are having a holoportation session with anyone, if it's happening, we don't have a way to know it. And uh, whatever happened is your stuff and we don't have a way to access it because it's your privacy. And we, we know that sometimes in medicine that there are a lot of uh, sensitive issues or deployed personnel, uh, military personnel in overseas, they want to meet with their family. So we don't really capture that. So we try to keep privacy and make it pretty secure. Is there any other question? And you have one, just raise your hand or shout. Oh, you, you have one over, let me see. In our example, this lets us create or combine together elements that go yes to create our own. If we actually have to look at a function, this function, I'll get into the format in a moment, but it's saying print the message followed by the text means you're equal, followed by so the question is if we are using more haptics other than big haptics or haptics feedback, yes. At NASA we have a base and we have a full suit that has also a compressor which is huge. And the sensitivity is better, so you can feel with that kind of haptics, if you are touching a holographic cat versus a holographic table, you can feel it. Um, so we have two versions of this technology. The government version, which is with aerospace, and the commercial version, which is with the Tech. We are trying to match both technologies. Of course, the government uh, version has more features, more bells and whistles. And that's why we, on the commercial version, we have we have used a glove that costs 300 bucks, but it's compatible. And at some point, I believe that people will be more engaged using the, the fancy haptics. But for government, yes, we have the full best, for the commercial version, we only have the glove. It takes an angle. Is there any other question? In this case, a radius. Look, we're thinking about a circle. By the circle, it's going to be. I have one there, yeah. It actually means that it's diameter from one side to the other. It's twice the radius. So it's AI? Diameter. AI is different. And for this particular function that I've created. That, yes. So let me tell you, yes. Um, so if we go to Mars, uh, let's see we have a crew on Mars and we're working on that one on the NASA version. Um, there is a delay in the communications between 16 to 32 minutes for a two-way communication. So imagine you are on Mars, you have an accident, you are bleeding and say, Houston, uh, I'm, uh, this is Mars, I'm bleeding. 32 minutes later, they will say, from where? You may be dead by then. So. According to the Space Medicine Division at NASA, there are about 440 uh, basic medical diagnostics. So what we're trying to do is to put AI for this medical purpose. So if you have an emergency on Mars or the moon, the first thing that you're going to see is the hologram of a doctor trying to give you at least the basic procedures to keep you away from a bigger danger. Uh, and then the biggest challenge for us is that at some point the communication from air will arrive and w the biggest challenge for us is that the crew member or the astronaut will not notice if he or she is still talking with the hologram, with the AI or the person. But yes, we are integrating that uh, under the space medicine division because that just having a very two minute delay in the communications is a lot. Um, and at some point, I plan to integrate that also on the commercial version. Any other question? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. If you can, download the app. It's not perfect. Every two weeks, we are pushing an update. What we want is to have an app 
that is working for you, available for anyone like you, and designed by you, by the people, by users, for something that you really like, instead of us just coming with an idea and say, hey, this is how it's going to work. So you can just download it, give us your feedback, um, and we we will try to tailor to tell tell the um, tailor the application to to your designs or your your needs. Okay. Thank you so much. And if you need me, uh, that's my email. If you want also to email me. Thank you.